Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Adine mod. And now, we have Lothlorien for the guide of the day. So, what makes Lothlorien so good? <laughs> Compared to what they were two years ago when I was actually bad bashing them. Like, honestly, two years is such a big difference now. I used to suck with Lothlorien, and you want to know why? Because I went archers. But... A good faction of Lauren to play against is Rohan, and I'm going to show it all to you now why I believe this. So with Lothlorien, you can have many different ways of playing. Long, uh, Large maps, you're really good. Small maps, you're really good. Uh, lots of settlements, you're really good. Not a lot of settlements, still really good. Uh, camp start, really good. Castle start, also really good. And honestly, you're good against most factions. The only factions I say you struggle against are the Misty Mountains. Just because of all their monsters. You're not good against a large array of monsters. Even with pikes, because our pikes aren't that good. I mean, have you seen the Mountain Giants? Madness they are. Start by throwing down the street. Oh, Rohan's already made its way over there. Once we destroy this spider nest, we'll worry about this. This this is not a problem for us right now. We just want to get economy built up. Because that, I think, is another thing about Lothlorien. A lot of people can go for a very aggressive playstyle, but can forget about economy. With a with faction like Rohan, for example, you can do that. You can work without needing to go for heavy economy. But Loth, uh, Lothlorien in particular, you need heavy economy. You can't go around not point everything in. So we're probably going to lose this man on tree, which sucks. But we've held them there for so long, we've now destroyed a spider, spider's nest. We've got another man on tree instead. They've probably taken that far. No, no, they haven't. They haven't taken that plot. But we are moving to try and attack this plot. Now, I want this Barrow White to live as long as possible as well. Because it will actually stop the, uh, the Rohan hero spam. For long enough, we can get Caliborn. Because one thing that Rohan really struggles with, if you defeat their early game, you can destroy. If you can defeat all their early game heroes, they've really got nothing going for them, and not a lot of factions can do it. Not a lot of factions can get past the um, the early hero spam on a shored up map like this. The reason I chose Tol Mor Tol for this game is actually quite a few reasons. Firstly, because a small map is easy to deal with enemy cavalry. It also allows us to uh, keep them boxed in. They can keep tra uh, they can keep coming through one way, but if we have a strong defensive line in one location. They're not getting through. And secondly, it means they're siege is going to be a problem. I've got to try and work around that. That's something I feel like as all, I've always struggled with it as against Rohan, is dealing with their siege when they come out. It hasn't, they, they haven't been doing like a, a full siege spam in the past like um, like Isengard is capable of on castle starts, but it is a problem still. It is still a problem to, uh, to deal with their, that spam. And I'm going to try and find a way to deal with it. But what I'm going to firstly do is get rid of that, those cavalry and then walk far away from that farm that these peasants lose their um, defend their homes buff because that is a very big thing that they get. Their defend the, their, their defend the homeland buff is basically a free draft. Okay, our economy is already going off the chart. Let's get the workers tool so we can... But, uh, send it up even further. Our military might is already twice that of the peasants. Quite literally as well. Now they're gonna start just pushing into our base if they're not if they're gonna avoid the barrow white, that sucks. Oh they took that very early. I'm gonna be a bit of a a bad boy here and I'm gonna try Oh no, just lost it immediately. <laughs> oh I'm happy with that. That, that, that took a lot off them. That Barrow White is very heavily leveled up. 
And we're just going to get more pikes, more swords, more good stuff. Another thing we can invest in on, on a close-up map is a sanctuary, getting the silver thorn upgrades. That way our base is more protected. But before we do that, we also want to get the forged workers tool because that actually gives us more archers on the walls, on our base, protecting it. We can see an Onaga is attacking the uh, Barrow White Lair from afar. So they have actually gone early siege. They don't always go early siege. If you leave them alone, they will go early siege. I've found if you actually pressure them really hard in the early game, they struggle to actually push out of their base and it's better to just um, to actually be able to do that. Not everyone can, but if they can, if that Barrow White can live for long enough, that Barrow White can live for long enough, that would be really good for us. So they're just getting, they're just sat there doing nothing. They destroyed the lair. They've done all that, but they can't kill the Barrow White, meaning they are stuck there until they can. The Onager is gone, which means we're in a very good position right now. The stream has already slowed them down. Make sure our pikes are going in to stop them. Good, good, good. We're just going to take it slow now. They're going to start making heroes. They're already making siege. The cavalry aren't a problem, surprisingly. They're not the problem. Let's get Ravage in the woods on this Malon tree. Since they're focusing this one, I might as well make this a center of healing for ourselves. Okay, we need to get rid of that Baron Ram. That Barrow White is not a problem. If they kill it off, it's a problem. We don't want it to get, get, get we don't want that Barrow White that to be killed. The longer it lives, the longer it serves our goal. And I think it is about to die. Oh, it got it got movement blocked. That sucks. That means we now have to deal with the full might of Rohan. Yep, they've completely killed that Barrow White. Aema is on the field now. So is Hammer. So I'm going to need Caliborn. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. We need to get rid of Caliborn. They've got Pitch Throwers. I could get Silver Thorns, and that would do that would do fine against their units. But I've got counters to their units. I need counters to their heroes. That is the only threat I have right now, is dealing with their heroes. Okay, I'm going to demolish this so I can get the resources needed to get Caliborn in here. I'm going to try and ring around the rosy AMR for a little bit. Oh no, no, we're getting rid of the ram. Get rid of the ram first. No rams for you, AI. No rams for you. They can take my buildings, but they cannot take my freedom. Yep, the heroes are coming in en masse. Let's go to the tree, the healing. We're faster than them, kind of, so we should be fine. Okay, Aemer's nearly dead. Kill him. Kill Aemer and make sure he doesn't get to use a spear. And while we're doing all this, we are healing. We also have to deal with two heroes. But that is soon going to change. Kill Aemer first, Caliborn. Because, yep, she can hurt you just as much as you can hurt her. But she didn't, and that's why she died. We need more units. I'm going to increase our production speed for units. Recruitment speed, even. Okay, we're, we, we, we're, we're floating now. We are floating. We are absolutely fine. Onagers don't matter, because we can just chase them down. a few things back. Don't need to chase with too much. Just enough. Chase with just enough because the, the less elves we have around our, uh, where siege unit is getting attacked from, we have more of movement speed. If three or less battalions are marched one to nearby, they gain extra movement speed. Which is perfect for gap closing and dealing with siege units. And look at that. Now all they're doing is spamming peasants. They haven't even got draft on them yet. Which means that that's all they're going to be capable of. And that, sadly, is really all we need to do to beat Rohan now. There is, as long as we keep on the ball, there is nothing they can do to win now. I mean, if they know how to use their tier 4 powers, Ents could be a problem. But other than that, there's not really anything to worry about. 
As long as we keep on the ball, we're just going to keep getting stronger heroes. We've got a, a healing tree. All they can do is make siege. They can bring some heroes back, but that's not still not going to be enough. They need actual damage dealers, which without armor, they don't have. They can make armor. Unfortunately, the units, the buildings that give them armor are being constantly used to make siege. And so that is why they have lost. Because they're too busy constantly building more siege. Which I find quite interesting. They don't ever actually bother to make see uh, to make their upgrades. Like you can have a game last over an hour and they'll still only ha only start making uh, units with armor. Or that could just be from the um, from something else they get. I'm going to play down the oven wood near our base. Howdy has been summoned. Let's kill him and get our own Howdy in his place. They destroyed my tree. I shall seek vengeance, how dear. Even though it was not you that did the finishing blood. I will have retribution. Protection from our arrows. Yep, surrounding himself with a gale. Gives not very resistance, gives movement speed. And it actually protects against arrows um, as it gets upgraded from his level 10 uh, trait. Might of the silver one when you activate it. How there is now on the field. The Galathrim are almost all dead. Make sure we're getting plenty of pikes to deal with their problematic units. Because, yeah, I think we lost all our pikes in that engagement. We're about to lose Celeborn. Oh, please no. Oh, please, please no. Please no. Please no. Please no. This is what I mean by as long as we play smart, we're not going to lose. We just lost another building. Which is... This is... Ne uh, this is... Negatively losing <coughs> words. It means we're losing more money. Caliborn, please fall back. This is not a warning. This is a a helpful tip. If you wish to live, run away. Wait, the tree does. Whoa, the tree does some new stuff. Okay. Apparently causes fear. Can. Uh, We'll grow and grant benefits after, amount, after an amount of time. Okay, I am liking this. I am not liking that we are getting sieged from afar and I still cannot do anything about it. There are no nearby enemy heroes. Do I need to deal with that Onaga? Otherwise we can't make any more units. We have nothing but heroes left. That is bad. That is really, really bad. We're about to lose the tree. Once the Onager is gone, no matter what the sacrifice, we'll be fine. So if they don't have siege, they have nothing they can hurt us with. Now we can kind of run away from this. Okay, I'm going to get Silver Fawns on the base because these guys are becoming a nuisance. And they're not actually attacking the units. I can't tell them to attack the units. Because there's a building there, and they're doing no damage to the building. Oh my god, this sucks. We bring swords from Loria. Dream right over there. Weapons ready, With haste. Get rid of those guys. And get silver forms. Because we do desperately need silver forms right now. And yeah, get rid of this building. Let's get our mountain tree back. As good as our units are, right now they're not the best. Our elves are still only elves. We aren't immortal god chads yet. There we go, we've got silver fawns shooting everywhere now. But they've got battering rams, we've got to destroy the battering rams at all costs. At all costs, the battering rams must fall. Not lose the border guard house. Now the one building I cannot lose, which I, in hindsight, should probably should not have built at the front. Oh, Onagas. How do I fall back as well? Let's make sure we get rid of that Onaga. Onagas are now the only thing we need to worry about. Battering rounds, not so much. 
That's the only, this is the only problem, again, with a, with a small map. They just throw their siege constantly at you. You get, you get no break. But we're fine now. We've got silver thorns. We're making units at a very good speed. Our heroes are alive as well. And if we can ever avoid it, we want to avoid conflict. We are not conflict seekers right now. But getting arrow storm, we might want to be conflict seekers. Once they clump up enough, a good arrow storm could do good. But I'm not going to shoot it yet right now. Because there's a time and a place for everything and it is not now. Though I do want, really, really want to kill those archers. Make sure they die. Oh, now horse archers. I can't deal with that. Yet. Can I admit it's a magical tree that will heal us? I should have done that ages ago. Okay. Now we, we're gonna we're now getting back to the, getting the stronger. Now we're back to getting stronger. It's what I like to hear. Let's get the workers tools. To prepare to upgrade our manor trees. Make them more resilient. And yet. Yeah, this strat doesn't always work. Granted, on a small map, Rohan is very dominant. But even so, we have just been holding them off so well. Because of that, 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 the speed to deal with the Onagers is what has been keeping us alive. If we didn't have that speed, we would be done for. If we were dwarves in this scenario, we would have had a much harder time. Much, much harder. Especially if we were Erebor. Rohan does really well against Erebor Dwarves because because they don't have any real counter to cavalry other than their shoddy pikemen. I still don't believe they're actually, actually pikemen. They're more of a halberd unit, a unit that's more that's versatile and is better at dealing with infantry than is with cavalry. Also because that's part of what they do. They for a time make themselves very against building and bu buildings and infantry. God, my English, my English isn't working today. My English feature isn't working well today. Don't blame me. It's been a very busy day. And I'm very tired. Very tired, boy. But even so, this is showing that unlike Lothlorien of the past, where I would have gone for Archer Spam, this Lothlorien is much more refined. This Lothlorien is far more refined than what it was in 2020. And we're finally pushing out again. Perfect. Gonna make this a Bayoning homestead. Oh look, they finally brought back a hero. She's gonna die in instantly. You know why they managed to make this hero? Because we've actually given them time to build up an economy. But still, look, not a single unit has upgrades. They've only used one tier three power. Most because the other tier three power only works. Well, I don't, don't, I don't think the three hunters works for them. It's something I've never really tested. So I've never had the time to test against a Rohan. I normally kill them off quick, uh, quick and fast before they. Well, I normally kill off well, Rohan quickly enough, so I never have to deal with the. Um, the sort of things like the free hunters. Or if I did have to, I'd imagine we would struggle. The free hunters are a very good unit. Okay, let's get Lady of Light. We're about to get Galadriel. She will remain Galadriel. I'm going to go back to my base so I can heal. We have earned a reprieve, I think. It is safe to say we have earned a reprieve. And a reprieve we shall have. I can't even kill pit throwers with that. Come on. Come on. The Ghost Eagle Agile is still the same. No price increase. Golden Arrow. 
to a nice bit of Thea. Only works on the unit, but you know. It'll affect more things once we upgrade it. And speaking of upgrading, let's get the four Sattler's tools. Not normally something I focus on, just because unless I've got a large settlement basis, it's not worth doing it. Yeah, I said we're going to fall back. I mean we're going to fall back. Oh, we lost another Damn, 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 damn. We're eventually going to get Galathrim. Don't worry. Don't you worry. We've had a bit of a slow start, so we're having a slow ending. I've let the AI take a lot of the map. By which I mean three settlements. Plus one. But I took it back. Oh no, plus an extra one. I've let them have extra settlements. It's not like the AI needs much to get ahead. With the Galadriel here, we'll start making a comeback. Because if you've noticed, they've not made Seed in a while. They've been too busy doing other things in the background. What things in the background could they be doing? Well, for one thing, preparing to get upgrades. That could be one thing. So as, I know, as I did say, their Seed recruitment building is also their research building. So if they're researching, that means they're not getting... Siege. Instead, they're just preparing for the late game, which is not a bad idea, since they've not been doing well with the spam. Okay, let's actually fall back, because again, we are very wounded. Our command points are very low. We have not done much. Let's get silver four arrows, because everything is going according to plan. Gradual move up so she can use her fear. Give this tree a heal as well. I can do that. There are no heroes, okay. Golden arrow, silver arrow, a horse archer. And then cow it in fear. get more pikes. And good. We've now got level 3 settlements, which means that Homestead has got its own arrow tower. Gives a bit more vision, even though we don't really need it. We soon get the power that gives us vision of the whole map. At all times. And faster cooldowns on our other powers. Uh, Caliborn, you earned your armour. I have earned some Galathrim. Unfortunately, we had 900 each because I don't have any extra Galathrim quarters. But that is fine. We can make it work. Another Malorn tree for me. Nice fallback again. <laughs> Uh, on a small map, you keep saying I want to fall. You want to fall back, but then you start pushing up again. But you realise you've only moved up a small bit on an on an ordinary map. But on a tiny map, you can't really tell the difference very well. Ah, they can still see me. Extra damage for everyone. Go. Charge them from a, an ambush. Someone in ambush from behind. Aha! You is screwed. Ah, they've summoned in their own Galathrim. Hellaborn, Might of the Silver One. Torrential Wind. Shining Blade. I don't know why it still gives experience, but who cares? Kill them all! Look at that. Look how he's just knocking them back. Oh, I remember back in the days of he died in 3.8, Caliborn was even more overpowered than what he is right now. That is right, he was actually overpowered. He could summon a tornado, a silver tornado around himself that actually flung enemies into the air and killed them. Instead of just knocking them back. That's how powerful, that's how over that's just how broken he used to be. Those days will never come back. 
But we can think of them fondly. As elves kill elves. And I keep getting more black for him now. That's all we need. Black from with silver fallen arrows, of course. Let's get Queen of Twilight, because we are leveling up Black quite well. The knowledge of the mirror is good and all, but it doesn't really help when you just want damage. It's better to have a power that does help with damage. Even if it means our other spells don't come back as quickly. Speaking of, let's fall back again. This time, let's not waste Arrow Storm on the Pitch Thrower since they are full health. Well, most of them are, anyway. I think I just heard Gollum. Maybe not. I don't know. Wasn't paying 100% attention to it. Get more pikes now. We don't really need swordsmen. We just need pikes to deal with the um, other things. Yeah, this they, they've now completely stopped making uh, siege units. They've just been making infantry, and they've probably been researching their uh, powers during all of this. Can't think of what else they could be doing to not be making this uh, siege right now. Now I've got the gold and the blessed arrow even. It's the same thing. It's the same damn thing. It's just a different name. Uh, another thing about Lothlorien you could potentially do is if you get an early outpost, you can actually go full, uh, full Mirkwood. I've actually done it before on a in a game in Dunharrow. I think on there's Isengard. Isengard or Mordor. I remember there being some siege. But yeah, that was a fun game. Dunharrow is a very fun map just to play uh, just to play outpost games. Where you can just have a bit of fun. Chill out, have a bit of fun, smoke some pipe weed. You know. The good stuff. How oh dare get up front. Shoot the blessed arrow. And have your powers restored and do it again. They will fear how dear of the elves. See, this is an interesting thing they've done. They've given it a, a fear effect around a blessed tree. And in full bloom, it before it was after, after being in the tree for 30 seconds, you got the ambush a lot faster. So they've made it a... Um, a more passive thing that activates as long as the tree has been around for long enough. I do like that. That is a, that is a nice change. That is a good change that uh, I do approve of. This is so small but so simple. It works. It works really well. Okay, we are about, what, 40 minutes into this game now? And AI has not made any siege. Probably has been spending all their time making... Um, uh, all their upgrade, and yet none of their units are upgraded. They've not attempted to rebuild this outpost, so that, that means their economy has probably been tanked for this entire game. They've just been spamming peasants, and peasants don't do anything against us anymore. Case in point, I've just thrown an arrow storm onto them, and they are all dead. Now Gladwell's going to banish them, and make sure their buildings do zero damage. Oh no, that's in her other form. There we go. She just blew them all away. Cut off half their health. Freeze the rest of them in terror. And then as soon as she leaves this form, she is going to go into the dark form. And cause an earthquake. A tsunami. A well, tears from the sky will fall onto the ground. And lightning as well. Lightning will come down and smite the, un smite the wicked. 
Not dark, but beautiful and terrible as the dawn. Use it on four buildings that had arrow towers. Treacherous as the sea. And stronger than the foundations of the earth. All shall love me and despair. Let's get Radagast. I'm not using it a long time. Get him on his eagle. This is not a nice place to Eagle be. time. Of course, because he can summon an eagle while up on his eagle. I think he can do that one as... No, he can't. He makes, bramble, he makes brambles on foot. He can also summon an eagle when on his... Um, on his uh, chariot. His Roscobel Rabbit Chariot, I call it. Not really a chariot, it's a sleigh. That's the word, sleigh. Here's rabbit sleigh. Charge in my elves. Destroy that fortress. Okay, Galadriel's back out of her dark form. How does almost got his ability back, so I'm going to wait a little bit longer. Blessed Arrow on the, the Citadel to destroy it. Beautiful. Might have silver one is almost back. Throw a tree in the base. <laughs> you can't use it in your own base, but you sure as hell can use it in your enemies. Let that be a point. And we've now got the blessed back. So let's make her blessed. Brian blessed. No. Make sure that Citadel does not get rebuilt. And then destroy their archery range. Destroy that tower. Use ambush since we're in the area where we get the ambush for free. And it comes back faster, so we're perpetually getting a 50% damage increase on our units. Before, I never used this ability. It was far too complicated back in the very beginning. We, you could only really use it in the forest. Before this tree ex existed, you could only use it in the forest. And that is victory. That it just show, goes to show if you can survive an early Rohan cluster, you've really got nothing to worry about. And Lothlorien does it the best because they've got the best defences. And wow, that was really only 30 minutes. That, that just also shows it feels like a game can go on longer on a small map just because of how much they're constantly harassing you. Look at their economy. That fell when they got one hero, when they got two heroes, when they got three heroes. And you can see right here, we started at 2,000. They gained a 1,500 resource cheat bonus. And they spent it all on one hero, on two heroes, on three heroes. They spent it on another hero, she died again. And that was it. That was victory from there. And yeah, it shows at some, at some point... In fact, let me pop theirs on display here. I believe this was when they got a uh, Forge Blades upgrade. So they had no, were building no siege. That was when they got heavy armor. And that's when they got banner carriers. Or in, what, in whatever order that they were. They were getting their research upgrades done at those points. And they were just doing nothing with them. That sadly just shows how bad Rohan's late game is for the AI. Early game, they're amazing. They've got Siege, they've got Power, they've got Heroes, they've got it all. They just lack a good late game. If they could give, if the AI could have a good late game for Rohan, they would definitely be a lot more difficult. They were a lot more difficult in the past because I just because I, I personally struggled with their early game. But if you find a faction that's good against their early game, which is strong pikes, faster units so they can actually hit their Siege... Factions like Mordor really struggle. Factions like Isengard, you'd be surprised, they really struggle. Missy Mounds, no problem whatsoever. All their units are fast. Anyway, I'm rambling on. This is Lothlorien. Play them however you like, really. You've got so many options open to you. You can play them however you want. And now we're going to be playing Enlarges. And you know what? I'm actually going to play it against Misty Mountains. I have faith I can beat Misty Mountains as Enlarges. Hope you've all enjoyed. And I'll see you all next time. Farewell.